Hello, I'm Blue, and today I'll be giving you some advice on how to grow your social media and engagement as an artist. But before I start, this video is sponsored by Kittle. Kittle is a design platform that offers design tools, templates, and library of graphics to help users create stunning graphics and designs. Are you ready to let your creativity flow without dealing with expensive softwares and those never-ending learning curves? Well, check out Kittle. It's hands down the most user-friendly design platform around, and the best part? It works right in your web browser. Kittle is really easy to use and its interface is easy to navigate, with tons of features from templates to illustrations, fonts, photos, icons, textures and more. Whether you're a small business owner aiming to create eye-catching posters, professional business graphics, logos, or need a design for more personal use, Kittle has got you covered. I decided to remake one of my older commission pages and wow, it's so user-friendly. It normally takes me a while to grasp something, especially a new program, but with Kittle, I was able to figure it out relatively easily. So I had actually way too much fun playing around in the software, I'll be honest. Just clicking around and dragging items I thought looked nice into a page was a lot of fun. I have no design mojo, so for me this was incredible to be able to like make something that looks like this without really having the experience in it. Kittle's diverse options allowed me to experiment with different aesthetics, vibes, and textures, and clip art. I was definitely most impressed by the text options. There's so much to do and play around with, and definitely made my inner typography nerd happy. What really sets Kittle apart is the lightning fast workflow. Thanks to its super smooth workflow powered by AI, you can create stunning designs in minutes. Kittle isn't just for posters, you can make designs from business cards to website banners to labels and even your own journals. The possibility is truly endless. I wholeheartedly recommend Kittle to anyone in need of a user-friendly design software that not only simplifies the creative process but also turns it into an enjoyable and enriching experience. It's perfect for those who want to make stunning designs without the hassle. If you're interested in giving Kittle a try, you can find the link in my video description. Try Kittle for free and unlock your creative potential with Kittle today. Thank you again to Kittle and now on to the video. I've been posting online for the past 7 years now, and in those 7 years I've seen so much online. But since I've been online for such a long time, I've been able to notice what works well on social media and how to grow engagement as an artist. Having a good amount of reach as an artist isn't just for the likes, it's also good if you're planning on doing it full time. Having a lot of people engage and see your work will help with future opportunities and projects. Especially if you're not planning on going to college or school and won't be able to organically grow a network and a community in this way. Social media isn't very kind to artists. I think this is very obvious, especially for an artist that has already been posting on social media. So please try not to let the number discourage you. Now let's get started with the first point. Prioritize growing. Having a set goal and putting in the work to grow your reach is significant. It likely won't just happen on its own. Though in some cases you might be lucky that this happens out of nowhere, but this is very rare. Being set and motivated to put the work in that is required to grow and invest yourself and time into your artwork and online presence is important. And this is a constant effort. Consistency and the algorithm. Now let's talk about social media itself and the dreaded algorithm. This is the part I've been observing for a long time and it's something I don't really care about myself at this point, which has made my engagement go down a lot. But I really don't have the brain power to care about that as much anymore. After seven years online, I want to pop on like once a week and disappear again for a month. Obviously, this isn't very good for my engagement, but do as I say, not as I do. Social media likes active users. Being active will improve your engagement and your art will reach more people. Post actual art once a week if possible. I post twice a month and that's usually good enough, but the more you can upload on a consistent schedule, the better your reach will be at the end of the day. Being active will make getting noticed by the algorithm a lot easier and help people remember you and your work. You want to stay at the forefront of your audience's mind and to do this you must stay consistent. Though remember quality over quantity, so don't compromise the quality of your work for the sake of posting frequently. A good way to avoid this type of burnout is having a posting schedule and repost a lot of older work that you've already posted in the past. This can help you maintain consistency without feeling overwhelmed. Plus it shows off the older work people probably haven't seen before. Here's some proof that posting a lot will help with engagement. When I was posting a lot on my Doodle account, because these are doodles and easier to pump out, so to say, it grew so much faster than my main account that for a while it surpassed my main account in engagement and follower account. The reason? I was posting three times a week on the Sketch account while I was only posting once a month on the other. 
even if the three times a week art wasn't as high quality as the work on my main account social media likes the fact that i was posting more on there so they recommended my account more to other people so it grew a lot faster so moving on to engaging with your audience reply and talk to people in your comments and dms ask for people's opinion and create a genuine connection Having a community around your art will help you stay motivated. Plus, it's nice interacting with people who are on the same vibe as you. So, engagement over numbers. Concentrate more on engagement than follower account. Follower account can be very useless, believe it or not. Instagram or any other social media platform hides your posts from your followers if your engagement is low. But if you have a lot of people interacting with your content constantly, your art will perform a lot better because the social media platform will recommend your art to more people. In other words, you can have 10,000 followers and get no engagement. It's cocky, I get it, but social media is like a death trap on its own. Take care of your mental health, even while trying to grow on social media. Speaking of engagement, your online presence is crucial. Let's discuss profile pictures, usernames, and bios. So your look. Your online presence will be the first thing people perceive of you, so having a look that is recognizable is important. Profile pictures and usernames. Have a profile picture that represents you and your artwork. Profile pictures are the first thing people will see of your profile and will be a representation of who you are and what you offer. If you have some random profile picture, the chances people are going to assume you do art is going to be quite small. Sometimes I scroll through my story views and I see a profile picture that looks like it has good art. So I click on it and I check out the profile to see if like this person has the same art as their profile picture. Normally it's not, it's just some random person with good art as their profile picture, but it's a good example of how your profile picture can grab someone's attention. So make sure your profile picture represents your artwork. If you're already a pretty big artist, having some random profile picture is okay, since you already have the reach you want. Like mine is done by B Doodles on Instagram. It doesn't really represent my art style, but I've had it for such a long time that it's kind of just like represents me at this point. Also something very, very important, try not to change your profile picture every couple of days. So your profile picture is normally what people will remember about you and not always your username. If you're changing it every couple of days, people are going to get confused pretty fast as to who you are and when they followed you. So let's talk about usernames. This is important to have a username that is memorable and easy to say. It's distinguishable and it's spelled easy. If your name is like something like Digital Artist 1234, it's likely to be forgotten or overlooked. It's overused and oversaturated name and you won't stick out in people's head because it's just a word there's nothing unique or significant about digital artist 1234 you are a digital artist but you want to have your own name attached to that so if you have a name that sticks out and is easy to say remember you'll be more easy for people to look up and you'll be more likely to stick in someone's head normally two words or a play on words is easy to remember so like a good example of this is parallel it rolls with the tongue it's easy to say plus it has something that stands out about it the O is not an O, it's a zero. It's not just the word parallel, but it has something that stands out about it. Also, make sure your username is the same across all platforms so it's easy to be recognized and to find you on other platforms. Buyers aren't very important. You can give some basic information about yourself, leave a joke, be professional. It doesn't really matter. Some artists like to involve their personal lives and some don't. It really depends on what kind of person you are or how personal you want to get like with your audience. Now let's get to the actual content you make and how to get people to notice, or how I did it at least. And to be honest, I don't know how the hell it worked. So here's the most cliche one, post what is currently trending or popular. A lot of my reach came from really popular fandoms I would draw for. People generally will like and follow content that they're familiar with, like their favorite characters or their favorite trends, for example. It's pretty easy to see what is doing well right now, like trending fandoms or trends look at hashtag and other artists works and see how they're performing. Though I would be careful with doing this too much since if you post a lot of fan art and trendy stuff, this will be what your audience expects from you and your original art will go overlooked, especially if your original art is something that you're very passionate about, this can like really demotivate you. Now, if you're an artist that wants to post just fan art, that's perfectly fine, go ahead. But if you're aiming to post more passion work or OC work, you're gonna have to find a balance. So find a balance between the passion, art you post, and what is currently trending. Doing trends can enhance your visibility, but it's important to create content that reflects your unique style and passion. 
You can incorporate what is trending in your regular work by doing the trend with your own twisted. This will help body your audience without compromising your artistic identity. If you are planning on posting more OC content, make sure you share them, their backstory and their personality with your audience so they can learn about who they are and grow attached to them as well. A lot of OC content goes unnoticed because people aren't familiar with the character and probably don't care to engage with the post. This isn't to say your OC isn't interesting, people love what is familiar to them. This is why fan art does so well because people are familiar with the character and the reason behind the art. So if your OC is very interesting behind the scenes, you got to put that out there and allow people to learn and become familiar with them. Draw what you love at the end of the day. People will be redrawn to something you put thought and emotion into. This kind of ties into the first point. People want something they are familiar with and whether that piece be with a lot of emotion, character they fall in love with, or overall just really put your art. If you put the love and dedication into your work and you're drawing the things that you're truly passionate about. So now let's talk about the aesthetics and the content style. So have something that is unique to your content, something that is recognizable, something that will make people go, yes, this is insert artist names art. That can be a color palette, characters, background, art style, line work, coloring, whatever you want to sprinkle in there. Have something that is your own and will help you stand out amongst other artists. This ties into drawing what you love. You will naturally develop something unique to you if you're drawing from passion and for something you love. There's something very important. You don't want to stay in the box of this is my thing. You should definitely be open to growing and allowing yourself to find other things that represent you. Now, if growing your social media and getting lots of likes is something you're passionate about, go ham, there's nothing wrong with that either. Now, let's talk about getting shadow banned. Here's a misconception about getting shadow banned. Spam liking does not equal to a shadow ban or social media hiding your posts. It's very unlikely that other people will get your posts hidden or shadow ban, but you yourself can cause it. Vulgar language, hate speech, anything that is incredibly negative will get you shadow banned. So be careful of the words you use even in a jokey way. For example, I once said to my OC in a story, I said, this ugly little man, I really hate him. In a joking way on Instagram and Instagram removed the story for hate speech and I got shadow banned for a little while after that. So be extra careful what you post, even if it's a joke, because social media can't like recognize that like this is your character and you're just making a joke about them. It's important to follow the guidelines and the community standards on the social media you're posting on. So if you want to check if you're shadow banned, you can easily do this, post something using a hashtag and see if you actually end up in the hashtag or see if you're getting recommended in people's feeds. If you are shadow banned, there's a way you can recover is, is to review where the issues might lie. So if you've posted something hateful or maybe a vulgar speech, remove it and give it time because over time your shadow ban will stop. Now let's talk about hashtagging work. Hashtags work in the way that allows people to search up a specific term that correlates with your work and it's easy to let go. It also groups your work with other works that have been hashtagged similarly. So make sure you hashtag your work with hashtags that correspond with your art. The first five hashtags work, so keep them short and descriptive. So since I've been posting online, I know the algorithm pretty well. I'll show you examples of how I know a piece will flop or how I know it'll do okay. I'm mostly on Instagram and YouTube, so I'll stick to those. So this is, I'm not always 100% right. These are just estimates and normally they're like 60%. I guess, okay, like this is gonna do good. This is not gonna do good. So if the content is very colorful and eye-catching, it usually does very well. I don't know, people just really like to be blasted with pretty colors and satisfying patterns and just pretty things. It's that like Norwegian draws people to like look at the post and like and interact with it. So if the piece has been made out of a feeling or an emotion, so like vent art, it'll do pretty good because people will relate to it and feel connected to the piece since they relate to like the feeling or what I'm trying to represent in it. People like having their feelings portrayed and something that they can relate to. If your post has useful information and can help people, this makes people want to interact with it, increasing the reach. So like process art, tutorials, opinions, questions, etc. If you share your experience with people, people are more likely going to want to like interact and ask questions and yeah. And very obvious if it's fan art from popular media, like when I drew Wednesday and it was really popular or I drew Nimona, it also did very good, but that's because at the time it was trending. If I tried drawing Wednesday now, it's probably not going to do as good as it did back then. 
So here's how I you know a piece is probably going to flop. The piece isn't from a popular media or I've never interacted with this fandom before. Like this fandom is like kind of niche, maybe a little bit smaller. Like for example, here is a piece that I did for a sponsorship. I did it for a game. It's pretty popular, but none of my followers <laughs> like know me for doing work for this fandom. So it didn't do as good. And like the fandom isn't like as big as like, let's say like Wednesday was at that time. So it didn't really like get put onto people's pages yes i hope this makes sense so just like if you're gonna pop up randomly in a fandom and like you don't have a lot of reach in that fandom it's probably not gonna do that well at first until you start like regularly posting in that fandom if the piece is very different from my normal work like my work like my normal work being very colorful that boom here's a low saturated depressed looking piece it's probably not going to do as well as my other work i don't really know how this works but Staying a little bit consistent on like what you post. I don't know, that works. It's real shitty because like sometimes I really want to do something outside of just color blasted work, but mm, okay. social media, you know. And unfortunately, sometimes it just doesn't do well. And that's okay, social media is unfair, especially towards artists. So don't feel bad or like your art isn't worth a lot when your gauge width is low. This just happens unfortunately, so just try not to let the ups and downs get to you. So I've been posting online for a very long time. Uh, it took me a very long time to like get the reach I'm at now. And a lot of the reason why I have the reach that I have now is because of popular media that I've been posting in for a long time. Um, and because of like the content that I make, like tutorials and stuff, it's useful towards people. So give yourself time to grow your social media, give yourself time to like create an audience that will interact with your pieces and stay consistent uh, yes so i hope this helps thank you for watching especially to the end i wish you the best of luck with your art journey and i'll see you in the next video bye